Now the sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops And it's gonna be a beautiful day, that's plain to see Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest-running TV fishing show. Now I'm going fishing with Bill Dance today. Let me tell you something. I'm always amazed at just how beautiful some of these fast water streams are in my home state, really are. Their landscapes are always changing, and the difference can sometimes be very dramatic within just a few hundred yards, or just around the next bend. Today I'm fishing upstream in a stretch that extends, oh, I'd say about four miles. One moment, the water, well, it's shallow with grassy shorelines, along a low bank and the next it's deeper with scenic high rock bluffs on one side and broken chunk rock banks on the other side. Now I'll tell you what you're going to find. You'll find long running stretches of current and then abruptly as you venture around the next curve well there's long calm pools of water. Then almost before you know it you're approaching a small waterfall with fast running water just below it. And along the way, well, wildlife always seems to be active and plentiful. But one thing you can be sure of, on Tennessee's many creeks, like the one I'm on today, well, old mother nature has made sure that the rewards are great, especially for an old country boy like me. There he is. Ooh. That's a good one there. That's a better one. Hold him. Whoa, good fish. Whoa, Buster. Come here, buddy. Where are you going? Come here, slide right there. That's a pretty one. They are, I tell you what, of all the fish that I've fished for, salt water and fresh water, that right there is my favorite by far. That is my favorite. Ever since I was a little bitty boy fishing the creeks, that's my favorite. Mwah. Love them. Nothing in the world has got more power per inch in fresh water than that thing right there. Do you like fish and moving water? Oh boy, I do. It's probably my favorite. One thing I've learned about it, and probably the most important factor that affects fish location in it, be it a creek or river is the water level. That alone controls fish location. The higher the water, the tighter the fish will hold to cover along the shoreline. Changes in elevation influence new locations and eliminate others. Now, when levels are low, it's smart to make notes and shoot pictures of any key things you see. Things look good, like cover, uh, or any visible changes in the shoreline contour. Any little things you see, maybe a log that's floated in that wasn't there uh, the year before. Uh, it could be uh, a gravel bar build up or a sand build up. Anything that's different, take a picture of it because when the water comes back up, you'll have a good picture of it and it's a good place to fish. Water. 
What a powerful fish, powerful. That pretty green color on it. Pretty self. There it goes. Had to have it. You know what? It looks so pretty down there in that clear water. It's gonna look prettier on my thumb though. Easy, easy, easy. You liked that square lip bait, didn't you? Yep. Oh, uh, gotta get my pliers. I'm always out of, where are they? That is a good bait. Big fat baby. Too pretty. And a nice one too. Have you ever wondered why at certain times of the year there are many different shallow water patterns on a lake. Well, the primary drawing card for bass is always food. When you're fishing shallow patterns, bait fish spread out more, and so do the bass. Now in deep water, forage is more condensed, so the bass also tend to concentrate and deeper patterns are fewer. Also, deep water fish are much more dependable than shallow water fish and are not nearly as affected with weather changes. Oh man. There he is. They come off that ridge and it's flying this way. Just getting it. Oh, look at here. You got hooks all in his big old face. You through? Ooh. He don't like it. Come on back here, baby. Say hello. Say hello. Easy now. Don't you dare do anything. Look at that size of it. Whew. Just fell out. That's a chunk. Bye bye. Here's a little survey that was recently compiled I thought you might find interesting. I surely did. Now, if you could only use one rod length and action for all your bass fishing, what would it be? First, the length. A six foot, a six and a half, or seven foot? Well, the survey said 15% picked six foot. 60% said six and a half foot, and 25% said seven foot. Now, you know, that really surprised me. I figured the majority would have picked seven feet or longer. Now, as far as the action went, 35% selected medium, 45% preferred medium heavy, and 25% said heavy. I kind of, I kind of long, I, I'll go along with that because that, that's more in line. I kind of hit that one. Now, what about soft plastic hooks? All right, let's, let's talk about hooks, okay? Now, when it comes to hooks, offset shanks, 18%, straight shanks, 2%, wide gap, got 30%, and extra wide gap, 50%. And I think the reason for that is a lot of the creature baits, they look, they're bulky and got a lot of plastic, so that extra wide gap won out. Now, since we're on percentages, let me share one more with you. The good folks at Zebco Quantum tell me 
narrow bait casting spools, outsell wider spools, 65 to 35 percent because they're more compact and they're lighter. Interesting stuff, huh? Thought you'd like that. Go on around here. I don't want to get my hand in that cold water if I don't have to. It is cold. How you doing? There we go, baby. I'll put you back. 